We're very fortunate to have with us Linda Vincel from PATH. Hi, Linda. Hello. You have an interesting title. What is it? I am the director for global health security at PATH, and as a director of a project, we're working in five countries to basically work on um, in preventing, detecting, and responding to outbreaks and pandemics in a variety of countries. Just global health security in and of itself, that just sounds kind of interesting. Um, I don't know, what is that? It's a great question. Global health security is basically making sure that countries have the capacity to be able to um, thwart a large scale outbreak. And it's also looking at how do you go between different sectors and work together. So veterinary health, human health and doctors, but also the military and border patrol so that you have all these different sectors coordinated in the event that there's a natural or um, infectious disease outbreak. How does that all work together? Well, the with all of those different departments because I'm you know departments don't work well together sometimes I agree um, but like right now I'm leaving on Saturday to go to the Democratic Republic of Congo and one of the first steps that we're doing there is that we're establishing an emergency operating center that actually has a structure a place to work where they can use data but then also it's a place where we put together standard operating procedures for all the different people to coordinate so that ahead of time they know how are they supposed to work when there's an emergency. You know, look, I got to ask you about the DRC because it's not necessarily a country that's particularly cooperative. They're not even cooperative with their own people. How are they going to be cooperative with you? Well, I think when you actually tell people and you explain that you're starting at the community level and you work, there was just a Ebola outbreak, this is interesting, in March of this year. Yeah. And you know, it didn't get beyond um, a handful of cases. And that's because we had the trust of the people at the community and the religious and traditional level that they actually knew that they didn't want their children to get sick and they wanted to cooperate. So it's about starting actually at the district and lower level so that people appreciate what you're doing and it's not the government from the headquarters coming I in. see. So that's the better way to go about it when you're when you're going at that level rather than from the government on high. Definitely, yes. What's the biggest challenge do you think that you have in global health security? To be honest, right now it's funding because right now a lot of countries have actually made national action plans and they're very serious about wanting to work on more of the prevention part of it, which is much better than waiting until the outbreak starts. And um, with the change in um, administration and everything, it's a question mark. They have committed that they want to keep uh, global health security as a priority, but if we don't have funding, a lot of the work that's been started three years ago is going to start to fall apart. There might be some people watching who don't know about PATH. Can you kind of give us a quick rundown about what PATH is? Sure. So Path I probably started. should have started with this, but I thought everybody knew PATH. No problem. PATH is a, was started as a project for appropriate technology and health, and it was a lot about reproductive health and coming up with better ways for um, preventing pregnancies. And now it actually works on many different areas. It's about product development. It's about surveillance. We have um, offices in more than 30 countries, and so a lot of it is on um, new diagnostics and how do you make technology appropriate for developing countries. And when I say appropriate, it's priced the right way, it's easy to use and culturally appropriate. Now, when you talk about global health security, I want to get back to that. That says to me that there's a there's a health issue somewhere. Some of it is pandemic disease, but other of it is man-made. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, disease caused by bombing people. Yeah. Do you get involved with that too? We do, because that's part of a humani humanitarian response. And another man-made one that is also important is antimicrobial resistance. Um, that is a big issue. That okay. Is Can you make it like in one or two syllables? <laughs> antimicrobial resistance or AMR and that is man-made because we've over prescribed and used antibiotics in um, animal health for you know poultry and uh, cattle and also in human health of over prescribing of medication so one of the things we're working on is trying to reduce the misuse of antibiotics so that we don't have uh, a lot of super bugs that can actually get into hospitals and then there's no new antibiotics in the pipeline oh my gosh do you deal with the MRSA virus too in, in other yes. countries yes. oh my gosh, how do you stop that? Invent new antibiotics and try to educate people on the proper use and diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So, when I look at you and ask you about your job, you're not a policeman. <laughs> what do you do when you go in and say, I'm going to help you? What, do you, what help are you giving? 
Actually, I have a, a lot of help because I think that it resonates with people because it affects anybody. When you have an outbreak, nobody's safe. It's just like an epidemic or Ebola. So it crosses borders and people take it very seriously. And I think it's about listening. The first thing I do when I go to a country is I listen and I try to absorb what are the things that people are dealing with day to day. And I relate to them in that way rather than coming in with a fixed agenda. So how can everybody watching help? Well, I think it's important to donate and contribute. I do that as a practice. 10% of my income, I try to support different global health efforts, volunteer and get involved, and be involved in local politics and support things that you believe in that support global health. Fantastic. Linda, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Rainmaker believes we can change the world. One life, one heart, one soul, one mind.